In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Um, before I start, my brethren, um, you know that we, ha we are only allowed 20 people in the church. So, um, if, if you have booked and your name is on the list, uh, please stay. If you haven't booked um, if, and if your name is not on the list, um, I can only ask you, I think this is not the time because as you know that this uh, Helen now has been uh, identified as a hotspot and they are um, you know, enforcing these uh, restrictions. So if your name is not on the list, um, maybe you can follow the live stream uh, of, of the liturgy rather being in the church. Today, my brethren, is the third Sunday of the blessed month of Ba'una. And in the month of Ba'una, the church puts for us parts from the Bible, parts from the Gospels, that tells us about the work of the Holy Spirit. We all have received the grace of the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of confirmation. And the Holy Spirit since then have been dwelling in us as, as the temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells in us working in us, praying for us, helping us and assisting us. And I wonder how many times did I thank God for the grace that he gave me and gave every one of us that the Holy Spirit is with us. But the Holy Spirit that wills in us, who works in us and the Lord gave to us so that can assist us and help us and comfort us and be with us in every step of the way, but actually, we can sin against the spirit that is in us. We can sin against it. The first sin we can do against the Holy Spirit was expressed by St. Paul in his epistle to the Ephesians. He said, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. He said that do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. We can grieve it. He continues to say, how can we grieve the Holy Spirit? We can grieve it by bitterness, by wrath, by anger, by clamor, by evil speaking. All these things, all malice, this will grieve the Holy Spirit. And on the contrary, the Holy Spirit can rejoice within us. If we are kind to one another, if we are tender-hearted, if we forgive one another, as God Christ forgave us. So we can grieve the Holy Spirit, and we can make the Holy Spirit rejoice. This is the first sin that we can sin again is the Holy Spirit. The second one, was also expressed by St. Paul in his first epistle to the Thessalonians. He said, do not quench the Spirit. Do not quench it. You know, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is called the fiery spirit. It's in, in us as a fiery spirit. And this is why um, the Holy Spirit manifested himself as many forms. And one of the forms in the day of Pentecost was as a tongues of fire, to tell us that the Holy Spirit is like fire. And it is like fire who um, spread the word of God in the whole world. It's as fire that comes in us and gives us this holy zeal. However, we can quench the spirit. It's like putting water on fire and it quenches the fire. We can quench the spirit. How do we quench the spirit? He continues to say, by despising the prophecies. When God says that I have prepared a place for you, that there is eternal life, and we despise them. By choosing death, the Lord told us in the book of Deuteronomy, I have put before you life and death. Choose life, and we choose death. This is how we quench the spirit. He told us to test all things, to hold to that what is good, and abstain from every, evil, from every form of evil. This is how we do not quench the spirit. 
is by holding to what is good and that we abstain from every form of evil. So we can quench the Spirit. And this is the second sin that we can do against the Holy Spirit who we receive the grace of in the confirmation. There is another sin also against the Holy Spirit mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter 7. This was actually said by St. Stephen, the archdeacon. He told this to the Pharisees and to the priests and to the Jews. He said, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in hearts and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So we can resist the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inside us gives us the enlightenment, telling us what's right and what's wrong. Yet we resist the Holy Spirit. It explains to us and um, manifests to us exactly what's right and what's wrong in every decision we make, in every choice we make, in every word we say. Yet we resist the Holy Spirit and do what we should not do. As St. Paul said, I have this war in my members. The things I do not want to do, I do. And the things I want to do, I do not do. The Holy Spirit in us tells us this and tells us what is right and what's wrong. Yet we resist the Holy Spirit and we do the wrong thing. The Holy Spirit is in the church, kept the church faithful to the faith and the, the faith established by the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet now people come and resist the Holy Spirit and resist the faith that has been kept in the church. And we read this today in the Catholic epistle when he said this, you've got to be careful because there will be false teachers. They will call themselves teachers. They will appear like teachers. They can dress like teachers, but they are not teaching the right doctrine. And this was um, told us from the beginning that we have to be careful of those who teach the false teachings. Yet today we come and we resist the spirit that kept the faith. We read today that in Snexerium that the first church that was consecrated in the name of St. Mary was in the city of Philippi, where St. Paul himself was there and established that church. Yet today we come and say, why do we call the churches on the name of the saints? Who is St. Mary that we call it this church according to her name? Why there is consecration? Yet we read today as an exilium, this is exactly how it was when St. Paul established the church. The Holy Spirit is the one, he is the one, God himself, he kept his faith for thousands of years. But no wonder there will come a time when there will always be people who will come and resist the Spirit and resist the faith that is kept by the Holy Spirit. Who told us that the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to keep the faith? The Lord Jesus Christ himself. He said that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who will come upon you will remind you of everything, will tell you everything, and will teach you everything. And it is the Holy Spirit from that day till today is the one working in the church and keeping the faith and keeping the church. So we can grieve the Spirit, we can quench the Spirit, and we can resist the Spirit. But in all that, God is so merciful that he can accept us back and can forgive us if we return back to him. But finally, the fourth sin that we can do against the Spirit is to blaspheme against the Spirit. Blaspheme against the Spirit meaning that we at the end keep grieving, quenching, and resisting the Spirit to the last breath. And this is the time when that's it. There is no more chances. And this is when we blaspheme against the Spirit by living our life to the last breath, resisting, grieving, and quenching the Spirit. This becomes that blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. We deny the work of the Holy Spirit in us, in the church, and in our lives. And this is what the Lord said today in the gospel, this will not be forgiven. 
this is what you, we will stand and be judged accordingly in the last day. Till today, the Holy Spirit is all over the world, knocking the doors of hearts of everyone in this world, inviting them to come to the Lord and to the knowledge of the true God. Yet many people resist the Spirit, grieve the Spirit, and quench the Spirit. But there will be a time when there will be no more chances, and this will be the true blaspheme against the Spirit. Today as well, the Lord is telling us to be careful that this blaspheme can be by word, by word, by our words. There is a very, very frightening or frightening to me um, phrase today in the Pauline epistle when he said this, that the Lord will come and will reveal everything. Um, therefore, judge nothing. This is what St. Paul says. Judge nothing before the time. Don't judge anything. Don't judge anybody. Don't judge, judge nothing before the time. There is a time for judgment. And judgment is for the Lord, is not for us. So he said, judge nothing before the time. Until the Lord comes, who will bring both. He will, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts, the counsels of the hearts, your hidden feelings, your hidden thoughts, the counsels of the heart, everything that I have thought in my heart. I haven't spoken it. I haven't expressed it to anyone. It's hidden, locked in my heart, will be revealed, and I will give account of. I find this very scary because... God can see the counsels of our hearts. He can hear our thoughts. Many times in his life on earth, people used to think things and he will answer them. He said, why are you thinking this way? They haven't said anything, but he will tell them, why are you thinking this way? And he will judge their thoughts, the counsel of our hearts. I know today we even go further and we express this by every kind of media and we express our opinions and now on Facebook and all the social media everybody is expressing his opinion regardless of who he is or if his opinion is right or wrong and people follow that and follow that and it doesn't really matter and they take this opinion and take this opinion also today in the readings we are going to give account of every idle word Every idle word, idle word means a word that we said that does not build. Like it doesn't do anything. It's not negative and it, 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 it's not, it does not build, but it is idle. It does nothing. God gave us the ability to speak and to say words to build, to build those who are around us and to build ourselves and to praise him and to thank him. So we'll give account of all this. Those who say there is no judgment, how can they explain this? The word that St. Paul said today in the first epistle to the Corinthians, that the Lord will reveal the counsels of hearts, and he will judge us for every word that we give. The Spirit is there in you to guide you and to tell you, do not grieve the Spirit and offer repentance do not quench the spirit, but let it be fiery and let it fill you with the holy zeal. Do not resist the spirit, but always obey the spirit and walk with the spirit and walk according to the spirit and be led by the spirit so that we can all be saved from standing before the just judge in the last day and be accused of blaspheming against the spirit. May the Lord um, always grant us that his Holy Spirit be working in us and be fruitful and fill our hearts and fill our minds and fill our lives. And glory be to our God forever and ever. Amen.